Hello there everyone and welcome back to Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. Cheer Up here in Commonwealth Lover. Um, we've got to talk about auditory issues as well as the death of a giant, but we did release Hippogriffian Governant to help take care of the issues up there, so. A little by Governor General Ocean Spray, but auditory issues. Lieutenant Governor or Lieutenant General Ecliptic Brian howled in pain as she kneeled over beside the howitzer, the ringing in her ears driving her to snap wildly the NCO beside her. Nightmares taint. The dust from the artillery piece from the shot began to settle, and thus uh, the ringing uh, hung in her ears. Ecliptic Brian was on the front lines while tr trying to change the doctrines of all the legions as something more focused on superior firepower, but she herself cannot stand to be around howitzers for more than a few minutes. She spent several tours researching their effectiveness in the field, but that meant her hearing had gone far away faster, as if the mayor was twice her age. The NCO's apologies to her gradually became more audible as a sharp whine began to pop and squirm back into audible noise, and I offered both my hooves as collateral man. The dull ringing uh, song sound hung in her ears as Brian waved a hoof dismissively to the NCO, silently forgiving him a fire in the gun while she had been so close. Ecliptic did not hold it personally against the artillery pony. It had been her own darn fault for not wearing ear protection. She was the one who made those rubber pieces of annoyance mandatory in the first place. She should have been wearing them. By the Empress, though, she would be hearing a ringing for the sound for the next four days. Mwop. 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 Also, before we talk about that, look at how the resistance is getting really bad here. And, uh, compliance, not too good. Actually, do we own this too? Wing guarded? Oh, we do. Interesting. The Death of a Giant. Examine stamp approved file. The daily routine of Eternal Eclipse with only one break. When his grandson came to visit for tea, but it would be different. It had to be. Examine stamp approved file. Stress and pain racked his mind. He didn't know how much longer it could go on like this. He wasn't lying to Lucin. He knew that, but he wasn't telling him everything. The nightmare above. Give him strength. Exam stamp app. Grandpa, you said you wanted to talk to me. The Eternal Eclipse snapped back to reality, grounding himself again, hearing his grandson already sitting in front of him. Eternal shot. Eternal shook his head and began to speak. I've been in charge of this legion for over two decades. I've served this nation in the nightmare above it for over six. It tires me sometimes. I can feel it wearing at my spirit and my bones, and I ache when I move, and I feel the wind knocked out of me when I have so much bend the wrong way. Lucid nodded again. I understand, Grandpa. If you wish me to take on more of the duties of command, I've learned a lot in Zerantia. I'm sure I can... No, Lucent, Eternal spoke with a sharp authority, cutting his grandson off. I'm not retiring. I'm not giving off more responsibility. I'm Eternal Pause. He had to collect his thoughts, but he also needed to be blunt. I'm dying, Lucent. Both of them sat in silence for a moment. Lucent unable to speak, an eternal unwilling too. Lucent began to try to stammer out some response, but it was cut off. I know what you're going to say, but yes, I am sure. I can feel myself approaching death's door. And with the halls of Tartarus before me, I will happen soon. Just a few days now, I suspect. That's just this feeling that I know is there, and I know I'm ready for it. I've done my work in life, and I've prepared the best I can for when I fall. That preparation is you, Lucent. Lucent looked down, not wanting to look at his grandfather in the eyes. Requesting permission to be dismissed, Commander. Eternal looked up, shocked at what Lucent had said. Tears welling in his eyes, he responded. Request granted, General, but may I embrace you? Lucent nodded, and they both embraced one another in a solemn moment before Lucent gave his grandfather a kiss, saluted, and left the room, tears in his eyes. Eternal Cliff sat down again, returning to some of his last work of his life. Examine, stamp, approve file. He died two days the later. The Funeral the council wanted to give Eternal Eclipse a grand state funeral, one observed by thousands. Radio broadcasts, parades, and a cadre of moon speakers as far as the eye could see honoring their fallen comrade, Lucent didn't have this request. He didn't need anyone or any more reminders that his grandfather was dead. The service was small, with only a hoofful of ponies present, and was given barely a footnote in the state's newspaper. Lunar Hall, or Hale, delivered a short eulogy over the modest cask before it was lowered into the ground. There was no pomp, no circus. Uh, it was all as Eternal would have wanted. He'll be proud of you, Auburn, said softly as the rain began to fall and scatter the mourners away. Not many points could stop the council from using this as a propaganda piece. A good stallion died. His death should be honest. It's what he would have wanted, Lucent replied, barely even noticing her hoof on his shoulder. Your grandfather's a difficult stallion to figure out. Always seemed to have a plan, though. Don't you think it's strange that he did not leave any instructions for his burial? Auburn added, adjusting his, her umbrella for both of them to stand beneath it. No, Lucent, Lucent whispered out, shaking his head. There was a motion buried at the bottom of his throat, starting to spill out as the pair now stood alone in the grave of his mentor. His eyes welled with tears, the stallion barely holding himself together. No, then you know it as well as I do. He trusted you to take care of him in this country up until his final breath, she said. He'd be proud of you. I know I am. I am. Friends forever, right? Ah, we've got some comments to go through as well, as we're currently doing the Cheer Up Terran Commonwealth, because, well... We are who we are. I'll be honest, at the time of recording, I can't remember which ones we read, but we're going to go with the integration rules anyways, because we need to. For a different event, depending if the moderates or the hard learners have a 50% more party popularity, because we like being pop popular this session. Also, I did choose Lucent Eclipse now, because we get more political power, stability, and less resistance growth speed, which we could really use this session. May the Empress bless the assembly of this new council, as ordained by those that came before. Lunar Hale declared as she finished invocation, convening the newly assembled council. And as long as she shall reign. 
And long she shall reign, Lord Commander Palisade said with a gravely low voice, now the most senior member of the Council with the passing of Eclipse and the retirement of Auburn. In a rare event, we should welcome two new commanders to our Council, Lord Commander Lucent and Lady Commander Auburn. Traditionally, we try to ease a new commander in with a simple tasking, something fitting for the position, but still modest enough for them to understand the full range of the reach. However, Lightning Charm interrupted with a wave of her hoof, settling her gaze on the still silent Lucent and Auburn. Tradition is what got us in this situation. Chapter was preparing for a millennia for the return of, of, to our homeland under the Nightmare. With their defeat, we must reevaluate. There's nothing to reconsider. The Night Empress has never led us astray. We must listen to her words and her word alone. Lunar Hail barked out, standing to her hooves. To stray from the spirit of the traditions is treason. Which is why we must be quite analytical in our approach, Lady Commander Emerald Light added. I attempted to end the argument before it began. Which is why we're looking to you too in order to find a solution. Despite the unknown variables you might be, I think we have a general understanding of your politics. We all lead the nation in her name, but it'll be your ideas that lead us into a new age. Lady Commander Auburn, Lord Commander Lucent, to let us begin. Two paths lay before the nation now. A guide repressing the resistance. All right, you rookies, shut your mouths, open your ears, and maybe you'll see home again. The grizzled bat pony sergeant snarls, striding up and down the line of freshly arrived recruits. I welcome you all to the cesspool known as War's End. You all have been granted the honor of spreading the truth of the nightmare across these savage lands. He stopped his pace and taking his time to glance at each recruit in turn, making sure his displeasure was crystal clear. The legionary council is free to claim whatever it wants, but you'll soon discover that things are not nearly as rosy as they say. Luckily for you, I'm the one with experience here, so listen up. First of all, the locals hate you, and that's honestly fine. They may give you the stink eye or jeer you once in a while, but I don't care. I'll personally whip the idiots who retaliate for that. The screaming ponies are not the problem. He paused, sucking in a breath, the scar on his forehead twitching. The problems are the silent ones, the ones blending into the crowds, watching and waiting for the occasion to drive a knife through your ribs while your back is turned, so you better not give them a chance. Always keep an eye out, don't get distracted, and for nightmare's sake, always move in pairs. I don't care if you got to use the bathroom or something. Unless you want to return home in a wooden box, you follow these rules. <clears throat> He sighed, tired. Your son and officers will inform you of anything else you need to know. Good luck out there, and I guess I'll be seeing you around. Those that make it anyway. I know, I know. The retirement. Father Auburn said curtly as she stood in the Lord Commander Autumn Breeze's office. At the replantation, we need to talk. <clears throat> about your tardiness in returning from em Eternal's funeral? Or about the gall you have to walking into this office like you own the place? The sitting council member chastised his daughter lightly, waving who for her to close the door. Don't let the servants hear a word of my girl having the tenacity of her father. You need to retire, she said flatly. I was being humorous when I commented on your gall, but I'll give myself a pat on the back for giving you the rest of the set of stones that make you think you can come in here and make that demand, Autumn said, as he shot up from the seat, leveling a hoof at her. Then understand I'm making this demand because I love you, she said, at a measure rehearsed pace. Lord Commander Clips was only ten years your senior and endured only half the sacrifices you have. And your point, your mother, the nightmare bless her soul, knew that I would be on the council until they peeled my corpse off the meeting table and the only leave I ever took was when she was sick. And that's why you need to retire. You've given it all you can to interrupt her. At the rate you're pushing yourself, you won't make it another ten years, Auburn said as she pulled her hoot down. Do you really think a young reformer like Lucent at the table will make your job any easier? I was wrong, Autumn said, raising a hoop to rub at his face. Your mother gave you that fire, maybe, but I just gave you my way with words. You also gave me your stubbornness, Auburn said softly, moving at a slow pace to hug her father. I would not come here and make this demand if it wasn't for the best decision for our family and for Sheriff Terra. I'll begin the necessary paperwork tomorrow, girl, Autumn said as he patted her back lightly, breaking the brace as he lowered himself back behind his desk. First things first, there's been a bottle of wine I've been saving for this occasion. Let me give you one last order. Go get it for me. Yes, Lord Commander, Auburn replied with a gentle smile. All hail Lady Commander Baroness Auburn Leaf. Very nice. A time to change. The monarchs have received the mandate. One nation under the nightmare. One nation under the nightmare, one will, one people. Our faith and our way are the only way forward in the future. If newly liberated ponies of North Zebraca can accept that, then the children's children will. Ooh, I'm looking, nothing here yet for decision-wise. Um, we still need more test subjects. We'll need to raid some more if possible, but, you know, whatever. Auburn Leaf, huh? More political power, stability, compliance. Oh, compliance growth, though. That's not bad, too. I kind of regret getting loosened then. But integration will was a hardliner mandate. <clears throat> It's a mercy, really, Auburn finalized, as you trotted around the legionary uh, council table, the various boards and reports littering its surface before the Lord and the Lady Commanders painted a clear picture. Auburn's mandate had been chosen, and she delivered a plan that on the surface seemed malevolent, and ensured the long-term stability of Chirrup Terra by designating certain regions as labor centers and ensuring a proper lunar education for even those within the center. We have the groundwork to integrate the next generation, and the one after that, Lucent said. The few compromises he managed to convince Auburn to take were, of course, her ideas to begin with, but she had allowed him to believe that they were his after all. You're right. Even if we pour the entirety of our resources into swaying the current generation to Nightmare's cause, there'd be so many holdouts. The only, this is the only way forward. Agreed, Lightning Charm said as she crossed her four legs and leaned on the table. We're a society of warriors. We have to prepare for war no matter how far off it might be. This minute you've developed, Auburn, I'll ma it'll make the Commonwealth ready, even if it takes decades. I am loath to agree, General Palisade said with a throaty, throat, throaty chuckle. 
But you've managed to surpass our expectations, Lady Commander. You have this Council's unanimous support and approval for this hardline approach. Lady Commander, Auburn's men, it shall bring us the future. Until the integration woes and national spirits removed, we'll be unable to change the Warmaster. Okay. <coughs> Interesting. Oh, we just get the complete anyways. Model Lunar's communities. Ooh, established settlements in any of the original core states. Freedom is a luxury. Less growth, more factory output. Ooh, that's not bad. Let's do this one. Model Lunar's communities. <coughs> Our people need living space. A place to call their own in the hostile lands of the east. Well, we may have, we may have vanquished their armies and burned their fields, it's time to lay the rocks or roots of our future there. By funding expeditions of the faithful to establish settlements in our new lands, we can lay a model of expansion for the future. <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing else here yet on the screen. That's okay. And we'll look at that person too. Freedom is a luxury. The new population of heretics in the Commonwealth must learn that freedom is a luxury bought with faith, family, and service. If they work hard and diligent in our new factories, their grandchildren might have a chance to enjoy the proper citizenship. Oh, that's sad. But, that's okay. We can trade for this one, too. That's fine. I forget which ones are red. Fresh blood? It's not bad. Counter... Oh, yes. Counterterrorism operations. Fighting uniform enemies is far easier than fighting a scattered insurgency. But there are many avenues open to us in this regard. The road ahead is dangerous, though. Failures in containing these threats do not mean only losses today, but losses for decades to come. An insurgency must be dealt with, with efficiency and expediently. Um, North Zebrakin Resource Allocation. Uh, department. As the borders have been greatly expanded in the wake of our victory, we must look to the redistribution of North Zebra's vast resources across the Commonwealth. The shambles of the nation states that once sell this territory were unable to use the bounty beneath them. It's our holy duty to the nightmare to allocate these new assets for the betterment of the Commonwealth as a whole. Ooh, magnetic detonators, nice. Let's keep going with more sub stuff though, that'd be good too. Um, I don't really think we can afford too many more divisions right now, so yeah, let's do that for now. We got some more research we could do. Um, go and get that anyways, because we can. I'll come to conclude. Loving this playthrough, my only suggestion might be to focus more on tactical bombers. When you have limited mills, it can be worth it just to get them out. Since they have longer range, you can do a bit of everything. Someone else says, hey, Mocha, have you ever considered doing a Hoi 4 A to Z run, but for Hoi 4 mods, and if possible, could you do it? Maybe. It's going to take a while, I want to, especially I want to get through the Old World Blues A to Z campaign first, at the time it's recording. Someone else says, the post-war resistance mechanic is way too hard and takes way too long. Someone else says, ve victory? Time to ban down the hatches. So else says, can you do TNO Guangdong? Um, eventually I will. I definitely will when the next update comes out, so when it comes out. Someone says, oh man, they went fascist for me. They're probably talking about Mount Eris, or the Eris group there. <clears throat> and it was their naval power that was a pain. The war went all the way to 1022. That's a long time. Project Oaxa, which I'm probably saying wrong, the first. The LMRD continues to make strides in distilling of crystal essence into injectable substances. The breakthrough in this technique was perfected several years ago by a former surgeon from the legions, but recent events forced us to publicly revoke his medical license. His unorthodox and unsupervised methods were quite fruitful. Our first experiments have run into the same problems we face, however. <clears throat> Upon injecting what was cartoonishly referred to as Uba Crystal into the unicorn subject, they received an unnatural boon to their power. Within less than a minute, however, the subject's horn violently ruptures along with most of the vital organs in a mess of gore. While we've issued blast shielding and goggles to the research teams to mitigate risk of injury, the explosive conclusion to that each test has cast doubt upon the stability of the late doctor's work. He theorized in his notes replacing the subject's organs, but such a costly endeavor defeats the purpose of the project Oaxaca. Oaxaca. The ability to quickly increase magical power. Heart surgery cannot be considered quick in any sense. The research team continue to dilute the crystal extract with the presence and the hope that a slow heart rate will alleviate the continued issue of volatile organ failure. The first subject to undergo this diluted serum will still suffer massive organ failure and do not physically detonate. Poisons are meant to pop like water balloons. Well, usually not. Search and destroy. Completing will increase the amount of resistance reduction gained through anti-terrorist operations. The flying arrow doctrine. <clears throat> amount of intel gained through anti-terrorist operations or decisions by 0.5%. Search and destroy. Flying Arrow Doctrine. Um, we'll probably do Search and Destroy. The obscene cost of building a network of overlapping fortifications is maddening. Therefore, we'll get the enemy where they find them. While the enemy will retain much of their freedom of movement, anytime they congregate in meaningful numbers, they'll be crushed within or with overwhelming firepower. The Ticking Clock. Uh, Zatoi had one single job. Every 3.2 seconds, the assembly belt would bring a steel tube before him with a clockwork precision. The zebra's task was to drill a hole into it. Each time he would lower the drill, sparks flying against his protective goggles, then the assembly bell would move one another with another piece. Why he was doing it, or why those tubes required one all in the same spot, Satoi could not tell, nor did he care. All around, him, other laborers carried out a similar task, more or less. Satoi never asked them what the job was, and he didn't have any time anyway. He had a quota to meet. 
Not always been like that. There have been times when Satoya had his own fields to tend to, passed down from generation to generation. He used to have a small yet comfortable home in the village he'd grown up in now. Both his fields in the village were gone, burned down by the invaders. The factory and the tubes were in their place. His friends and family were gone too. Some had fled, others had died. A few went to join some resistance group only to be hunted down by the invaders. Hours passed and Zatoy continued drilling holes into steel tubes. The sound of hoofsteps echoed behind him at irregular intervals. As the overseers made the rounds between rows and rows of working laborers, once there it would have been an occasional crack of whip or smack of batons, but those were no longer necessary. Somewhere off in the distance there was a loud, piercing whistle as the 14 hour shift came to an end. And then they returned to the barracks as they were doing fresh blood. Much of our high command trained for years to prepare for the great war that never came, and they trained to storm Canterlot to fight through the streets of Manhattan. A new generation has arisen in this conflict, one that trained and succeeded in the liberation of North Africa. It's time to recognize their achievements, as then we'll do search and destroy, as we're slowly trying to continue to putting down more and more resistance as much as possible. I'm not sure how this whole intel thing on True Moon Society and all this stuff is happening. We have no more laborers. We are doing the second phase of Oaxaca, however you pronounce that, and it's a lot of political power trying to get all resource rights down here, too. Soaring wood. Do you have anything here important? Do you got. Oh, a rubber's not bad. Um. As much as I want to do that one, I want to put down resistance as fast as possible. I think that's probably the best goal we have right now. Um, actually, do you already have this? Settler colony. So technically, this should be going down, right? Yeah, 0.95, not even 1%, but yeah, overall, not bad. Um, better subs. And evening at the pub. Cool. Uh, let's keep working on some shippy stuff, too. Language battleships. Go with that one. Deep in the streets of New Ayakachitli, there uh, lies a small bar popular with. Legionnaires in the bar, three glasses clinked together. Three friends gathered to celebrate the promotions. Crimson waves sat beside his two subordinates, <clears throat> who had served with them from the first, from his first command. Hard to believe how far we've come. I feel like we're barely out of the academy. Crimson said, still adjusting to his new uniform. I'll say, I bet you've broken the record in terms of just how fast someone can move up the ladder. You make friends with members of the council or something. One of his friends commented, before taking another swig of his drink. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm just good at what I do, and that's something the Legion is eager to reward, Crimson responded, before taking a drink himself. Don't undersell yourself. He put the fear of the nightmare into those heathens' last engagement. His friend responded in turn. The group then proceeded to order another round of beer, glad to have some rest after a particularly difficult series of battles. While Crimson Wave had not broken any records, he had still been promoted at a faster pace. His motto, harsh but effective, reflected his policy of command. That's kind of like me. He expected the very best from his soldiers and gave his best in return. When his ponies trained, he would tirelessly study tactics and strategy, ensuring that every aspect of the upcoming battles in the Legion's favor. This policy had earned him the respect and the admiration of the Legionnaires and carried him up the ranks. But really, Crimson, you've got to slow down and give him the rest a chance. His friend said, you'll be commanding the entire Legion in a few months at this rate. The other commented, don't be ridiculous. If I slow down, then we'd be drowning in heretics by next week. The table erupted into yet more laughter as the three continued to drink, and as their celebrations turned continued long into the night, Crimson Wave thought about the future. Maybe one day. You never know. Inter-service cooperation? Yeah, inter-service cooperation. While fighting an insurgency is much more later than a conventional war, it does share similarities. Clear lines of communication and integrated chains of command and areas of operation will enable a singular shared approach as opposed to multiple disconnected efforts from different agencies and branches. Those are building more cities and roads. Not military factories for now, just because I want more cities and roads. Um, and we need more resources anyways, which sucks that we're on, oh god, we're only on closed economy, which I'm kind of wanting to get over there too, but whatever. Um, uh, settlement, I would love a settlement down here actually, if anything, but let's do that one first, as over here, where Zena will be ours hopefully first. Yeah, we're going to focus on the close areas closest to our own core lands first, even though I did already put the settler colony over here. Uh, so this one is a desert flowering. Mechanized agricultural sector, opium plantation, but yeah. Silicon is actually really nice to get. Quite good. Hey, reduction. Thank you. Search and destroy. Alright. We do this a little bit more. And two terrace operations. That'd be nice. We'll do those two as well. 35%, 36%, not bad. We're going to keep lowering as much as we can as we get try to get more fuel. Electric torpedoes, that's not bad. We'll go focus to there, that's fine for now. If anything, actually, carriers would be nice too. Cool. What else we got? Not a lot of PP. Um, and that costs 500 manpower each time, so it is what it is. Maybe we'll get about 1,000 a month, which is pretty good. Civilian outreach programs. More compliance, internment camps. Local Legionnaire Commissariats. For every state with this occupation law, we'll gain 0 0.05 intel per day. Less compliance, more required garrisons, but more local penalty power, and way less resistance target. The WLA question. Cartelized economy. Well, 
Uh, I'm gonna play this route two, at least two times, so civilian outreach sounds like more of a non aligned route, so we'll go with interim and camps. In an insurgency, it's impossible to tell a civilian from an insurgent, so we'll no longer attempt to. By rounding up the locals into patrol and regulated camps, we can let them go about their uh, lives under our watchful eyes. We eliminate anyone outside these camps. If they're outside the camps, clearly they are the enemy. Level 2. A standing breakthrough from the Project Oaxaca has led to the first stable use of an Oaxaca serum without the spontaneous rupture of the patient. Although the labor was rendered a vegetable, for several minutes they displayed unrivaled magical ability and, of course, strength. This development stems from experiments with depressants that the research team had used to dilute the powerful effects of the crystal extract. After several variations, a breakthrough came in a surprising place. Opioids. Upon mixing copious amounts of morphine into the crystal substance, the team had been able to stabilize the initial effect of the Project Oaxaca to its intended effect. Without the sudden discharge of gore prevailing in all other tests, I have subdued hope and success of the project. There is a level of concern around the immediate aftermath of using the serum in its current state, while Project uh, Oaxaca, which I apologize for saying that wrong again, is going to give us an edge. And it does not meet the, this purpose by rendering its user permanently brain dead. The teams will continue the research in developing a more stable substance, but for now we can finally remove the blast from the lab. Wonderful. I love internment camps and local legionary commissariats. A series of joint military, civilian military comm commissariats shall be established in these zones of occupation to deepen our connections with those new territories within a government in Chiraptera. Over time, these shall be dismounted in favor of more conventional governmental structures once insurgencies pass by down to a local level. I love camps. Uh, a uh, society of warriors. The purpose of the Commonwealth is not to build a new nation for Nightmare Moon. Its purpose is to wage war for it to reclaim a rightful throne. Our purpose in North Zebrica is but a stepping stone in the far greater effort. Our society is made for war and it will always be made of warriors. A haven for the faithful. The failures of Operation Moonshine and the subsequent withdrawal of our assets from a question in New Maryland meant that we also had to leave many of the faithful behind. Moreover, with our newly acquired territories, we now have more than enough room to welcome them to our shores and make a stronger effort to bring them here. Local commissariats, of course, which we read. The WLA question, uh, veteran land grants. The lands of the East can hardly be considered loyal territories yet. While we continue to debate what to do with its denizens, we can guarantee a perfectly loyal group of allocating significant portions of the territories to veteran plantations. Not only will this prove to be a boon to our economy, it will reward uh, our former soldiers and plant true citizens of Chiraptera across the Commonwealth. Legionary Settlement Defense Force. Ooh, that's resistance. Well, the pacification brigades are an excellent tool in our arsenal for dealing with stubborn resistance. Even a military cannot be everywhere at once. Among loyalists and veterans across the Commonwealth new territories, we shall empower them to form defensive militias in their towns to combat insurgent forces. This will put much needed pressure onto the rebel groups with, of course, little cost, which is very, very important. Well, let's continue expanding here. We got more land doctrine, and people are killing each other. That's fine with us. We don't really care. Better guns. Yes, please. We need more military factories. We need more resources and supplies. Gather intel. Uh, costs a lot of pony power. Oh boy. 5%. How can we tell how much intel we actually have on these guys? Though? That's my question. Do they mind establishing settlements right there? And then... Uh, sure, why not? North Zebrican Liberation Front. Let's see if there's anything actually there. But, the you matter know. of veteran land grants. With all due respect, Commander Clips, I do not see how much matter is worthy being brought up before the Council of Stone Palisade noted with a slight frown. Perhaps we'd better move on to more urgent business. And at this point on, I must disagree with you, Commander Palisade, Lucent encounter with his tone always polite. In fact, I'll go so far as to say that the matter of land grants for retiring veterans is deeply intertwined with the security of Chirrup Terrace itself. He shot a careful glance around the table, making sure that the rest of the council members present that day were doing everything but paying attention to him. As long as they believe the matter of being of little importance, they'd be more than happy to give him the leeway he needed to properly implement his program. And as you are aware, our new domains are vast and our forces stretch them. Settling individuals, uh, loyal to the Commonwealth, who possess both training and weaponry, will help alleviate the burden of our regulars who are, are weighted with. Sadly, we only have the resources for implementing one of such initiatives in any meaningful way. I have prepared a brief overview of the program, together with an analysis of potential benefits on... Thank you, Commander Clips, for your thoughtfulness, or thoroughness. Lightning charm cut in acidly. That won't be necessary, however. The Council trusts fully your judgment on the matter. Any opponents any objections? Her glare to the rest of the Commanders threatened to kill any pony brave enough to raise one. Perfect. It's settled. Let's move on, then. All nodded along, loosened among them, although he was careful to hide the small grin on his face. He knew exactly where to begin with the project. Zantian border. Ooh, that's resistance. Tobuckian coastline. Rosanna territories. Zuminian zone. Um. Well, actually, we're doing okay with compliance. Resistance is falling down, even though I would like to lower this even more if possible. It is a settler. Well, it's not a settler com community yet. Still working on it. Um, I would like this to be done very fast, but we've been trying to get these guys down as, as fast as possible, down too. So, like over here, Ascalon. Uh, well, that's five though. But we're not really ready for that at all. We still haven't done the cities yet. 
I do like five though. Five is nice. But over here we have just as much population. Um, well, I kind of want to go with this one. Oh, now it's going back up. See, that's what you want to be very careful with that. Which is not good because we need more compliance, but whatever. But it leads to an area settlement force. Um, so, yeah. Econ economic cartelization. This is the market. Not bad. Of course, I read this one earlier too. I'm talking about this one. So, if you read this one, please go to head. Luxuries for ma masses. If you want to read this again, please go ahead as well, which we'll want to do both of those. As we're waiting to get a lot more of this stuff done, as we're trying to extract as much as we possibly can from the earth. Um, let's see, gather intel. There you go. You can do that one, I guess. Dual purpose is very nice as well. That's a lot of time, but go do it anyways, because then we'll make some really good carriers. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one eventually. Our economy, while made to support the war efforts, must be adapted to allow us to accomplish our goals over a greater period of time. The do this one embrace the concept of cartelization, where state owned industry shall dominate the sector of specialization. Also, we'll a lot of small businesses prosper while we ban the markets completely to us. Special access zones? The LMRD and Native Affairs Commission have presented a bold news research strategy aimed at collecting large units of data at once held from an enclosed population by combining a labor barracks and works that into one special access zone. We can completely restrict their movement and allow the LMRD to observe them as they work. Nice. Um, I don't want to hurt compliance yet, so a day at the range. Oh, the bullet struck the very edge of the target, ripping a small piece out of the cardboard, but leaving the circles intact. You're still jerking the trigger, and you're closing your eyes, Firm Hoof said, as she watched her daughter lower the rifle with a frown. Um, but I try, Moonlight said, English, you're loaded, pulling the bolt back up, forth, up, back, and forth, down. I just don't get it. How am I supposed to keep my eye open when there's an explosion right in front of my face? Why not fearing it, Firm Hoof said, hunching down by her side, raise the gun again, aim onto the target, steady, she cautioned her. Line up your shun, don't jerk the trigger this time. The range was a bit on the smaller side. Uh, the firm hoof would have preferred something bigger, but the location, a large and open sandpit only 10 minutes away from his new home, was unmatched. Along the small brook nearby, the fruit trees as well as the fertile soil, she was happy to be here. It was a good place to raise a family, and she could see why the previous owners had built their home here. They hadn't used this place as a range, though. That probably was part of why they lost the fight against Sheriff Terra. Weakness begat failure. And squeeze, she told Moonlight, who obeyed and calmly squeezed the trigger, sending the bull flying directly under the target, striking only a couple of rings away from the bullseye. There we go. Um, Dr. Duppet and Navy Field Consumption would be really great to have, actually. Um, what is this? Gas attack, which is pretty cool. Um, Sankian. Yeah, we can't do that one, can we? That kind of sucks. And we can't do that one either, so doing these two would be alright. Equipment modernization. Um, that just gives you blueprints. This one's not bad. It's a little better. But, uh, organization loss, reinforce rate, that's not bad either. Let's focus on the war at sea. The large board of Chirp has with, is with our ocean, meaning that we must have a capable navy to defend ourselves with. By reviewing our current doctrine and comparing with other developments from our own experiences and that of others, we can expand our naval knowledge far beyond our current capabilities. What well, took others years will only take us months for the nightmare guide uh, for the nightmare guides us with a shadow. Shipyard expansion scheme. While we're guided by the nightmare, we must also be aware of our capabilities. The shipyards of Chirup Terra will be modernized and not only rival that of our enemies, but surpass them. Our ships shall be remembered for centuries, and their legacy will rule the waves around us. In a thousand years, the weight of our naval power shall crash against our true enemy. For now, we have sharpened our fangs on the prey that we find ourselves fighting. The Sea Wind Mark II. Effective, hard to detect, and dangerous. It's easy to see why the Legionary Council has favored the development of the sub. Our current holes are out of date, and if we wish to have our wolf packs be the most dangerous in the sea, we'll have to be given the best tools to be successful. The Moonfire Mark II. Cheap, maneuverable, and swift. It's also easy to see why the Council favors this surface ship. Although not as effective at raiding as our subs, our destroyers are ancient in comparison to that of our enemies. New hulls and new gun mounts mounted on them will make our surface fleet stronger, and it's wiser to start at the ground up for the retrofits with the support ships rather than starting with the big old battleships, or something like that. Fuel Conservation Initiative. As we improve our naval capabilities, we also need to allocate a greater stockpile of fuel to the surface and subfleets. All of this is a dangering or daunting task. It's a simple solution. Expanding the reserves. By constructing additional fuel silos, we can increase our total storage capacity, ensuring an availability of fuel during long-term operations. Auxiliary combat role training. Our auxiliaries cannot be wasted on menial tasks anymore. Some of our most loyal units comprise of auxiliary forces. Therefore, we must integrate them wholly into the legions. Separate support companies mixing with regular troops will give our frontline units greater flexibility. As we're going to try to raid again. Oh, god dang it. Oh, I gotta reload this. Well, let's read a couple more. Just cause we're doing all the intel stuff, but... It's it's going. It's definitely going. Form the Imperial Marine Corps. 
Iron Reach shall be placed under siege, under lockdown. The Nightmare's Imperial Marines will storm the ranches, homes, and liberate them from the heels of their masters. Our Marines are merciless, dangerous, well-oiled machines that will land on their shores without warning. Long distance operations, supply line disruption tactics. Uh, I like both. Uh, I'm going to go with this one for now. Subs. We cannot match the operational range of our surface fleet with that of our enemies. Therefore, we should dedicate most of our efforts to our reliable raiding groups. While the wise run ship show shall be secured, we shall cause havoc upon the enemy whenever or wherever the ship shall sail on the ocean. There will be no escape from our hunt. Equipment modernization. The world around us is rapidly evolving with major technological advancements made in a matter of months rather than years. We cannot afford to fall behind. It's too costly and time continuing to consistently rely on espionage to acquire new equipment for us to copy. So, we must subsidize our own researchers to improve upon our own equipment. Adapt the Luna Nova. Magical rifles are a novelty. Unreliable, perhaps, but their efficacy cannot be denied. Gone are the times when only unicorns could launch devastating spells against their enemies, though through a more widespread adoption of such weapons. Our forces will be capable of punching well above their weight. Legacy of the Shadow Bolts. Shadow Bolts were a dedicated flying formation uh, from the first coming of Nightmare Moon, known for the ferocity in the skies. Their night flying is legendary, and their accomplishments in the skies even greater. We should look to the memories we develop our flying core capabilities, and our new planes and doctrine will echo their legacy. Uh, legionary mechanization. There's a tribe of warriors on Zebra that can march 50 miles a day and still fly it, but they're usually only carrying spears and shields. A modern soldier carries much more in a support unit's wagons. We must fully modernize our military so we can move 150 miles a day and fight with the full force of our modern legions. Armored trains. Railways are the backbone of our logistics, no matter what matter amount of trucks we may have. It's important that we provide this critical asset of military infrastructure with the means to defend itself. By implementing the use of armored trains, we can not only improve the defense of our logistics, but also some units dedicated to promoting railways, or protecting railways, to Project be used elsewhere. Project Oaka III. A unicorn volunteer from the Children of the Moon Legion survived the final test of the Project Oaka today. Although half a dozen labors have also survived the process, the thorough testing had to be completed before. We tried it upon the faithful. The experience, according to the unicorn, was unlike anything she had experienced before. Magic came to her easily. Her power was exponentially increased, and a clear aura of energy grew around her. And she didn't explode, which is a good sign of these matters. She performed in record strength for ten minutes before crashing several minutes longer than untrained unicorns had. Well, the teams have found success in the use of morphine to dilute the compound. The brain death of several laborers made it clear that it was simply too strong and depressant. While pure alcohol dissolves most substances as a solvent, the crystal extract could persist easily within it. But combining the two, our teams created the uber crystal conjunction that has led to Project Oax's success. While the most mages will be rendered exhausted following the use of the uber crystal, it's an effective tool of necessary last resort in a legion's arsenal now. While the LMRD prepares to move into the mass production, I'm pleased to report another successful project to the Council. Let's go practice medicine. The uber charge. And uh, we can still do this one. The once prosperous centers of the industry in Tobuk, and where Zinner was suited for their needs. Not that of the Commonwealth, while many locals protested this decision. It's only logical we relocate these assets where we see fit. These are no longer the factories of corrupt business ponies and warlords, but the means to a greater purpose under Nightmare Moon. The Luna Rifle. The stallion sat in his hospital bed and thought of his life. Coffee Hayes new guns, that's for certain. If there was anything in the crazy world a thousand-year-old army of exiles and immortal princesses that was for certain, it was that Coffee Hayes could take apart any gun and make an improved copy of it. It might not be a Thestral Pegasus with their wings, but nor a unicorn with their fancy magic, but... Coffee Hayes knew his guns, and therefore... Uh, <clears throat> This new model of the Lunar Rifle is about the strangest thing a Legionnaire will ever plop down on his desk and told him to figure out. Uh, Nightmare's sake, the thing didn't even fire bullets, they just charged bursts from a crystal. It didn't make a lot, lick of sense. Or salt lick of sense. How in the name of Tartars did it even have a red coil? There wasn't any cartridge being extract or ejected anyways. The Stallions work on the weapon had taken weeks in a dozen different variants. Even when he copied the Lunar Rifle part for part, it broke apart in his hooves. Either the weapon itself was shoddy or his work was, and the latter was near impossible. Things would change, though. He finally figured out that by expanding the cooling ports along the barrels uh, of the rifle, it can not only mitigate the recoil, but allow the weapon to cycle through its crystal cartridges at a fast rate. That was a stroke of genius. I just forgot the fact that if I didn't account for the magical discharge when removing the magazine, I risk burning my flank sometimes something fierce. Which I did, Coffee Hayes said with a shake of his head, sitting up a bit straighter as he offered a smile to Legionnaire. But rest assured, though, I'll get it next time. If there was one thing Coffee Hayes knew, it was guns. It's got a bit of a kick, that's for sure. Economic cartelization. Our economy, while made to support our war efforts, must be adapted to allow us to accomplish our goals over a greater period of time. To do this, we'll embrace the concept of cartelization, where state-owned industries shall dominate their sector of specialization. This will let small businesses, pro businesses proper, prosper, while we bend the markets completely to us. Um, No foe left behind once one major terror group has been neutralized. A child's mind is easy to mold to see the truth of the world, no matter their faith or background. No foe shall go uneducated. They must learn of the Commonwealth history and of the tyrant of the candle They must learn of the supremacy of the world. Oh, more compliance growth speed. Well, at this point, I, I'm not sure what we can do. I mean, we're, we're rating, which is great. No, don't get me wrong. But, like, I don't see the process. Like, we need to know, like, how, how much more we need. Because uh, is there somewhere else we can see, maybe? Maybe I'm wrong. Frontier Forces. Native, Khmer, Native Affairs Commission. Security. Centralized Command Power. Integration Woes. 
We have overwhelming resistance still. Additional development fund, visible state, youth service core, nightmare plus Terra, Andrew Dittrich Medical Network, so yeah. Hunter Killer subs are nice too. What to work with off screen probably. Um the slave states. Some areas will never fully be pacified or enlightened. We must accept this, therefore certain regions will under across the commonwealth we designate for the purpose as a source of laborers and centralized areas to utilize their unique circumstances. Is her Imperial Majesty's Legionary Ranger Corps. We must develop a dedicated light infantry corps to better improve the lethality of our divisions. It's with this course of action that we open our first ranger school in the Howling Hills region. We shall test candidates' mental, physical, and martial prowess in order to form a specialized ranger corps that can be integrated with our main infantry units. Which is a good idea, of course. Uh, early main battle tank? Sure, at this point, why not? I mean, I'm not sure what else we can really wait here for, but whatever. Um, don't get me wrong, we did do this stuff too. We did get local commissariats. For every state with this occupation law, we'll gain 0 0.05 intel per day. So, yeah, I think that we could really, 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 really use uh, industrial location. No. Um, local commissariat service. Just like, knowing how much we need. Because we're just left in the blank right now, which is not cool. And we'll just try to get more intel on them too, but still. Also, we will get extracted faithful from Equestria. And stuff like that, so. Of course, we'll do these two as well, and that one's strategic destruction. In war, we're not just fighting military forces anymore, we're fighting nations. Every city is an asset, every civilian and a laborer for the war effort. Some of the council might not approve of this new approach to warfare, but we must strike at all assets of the enemy in order to end the war quickly as possible by bombing the enemies into absolute submission. Combined arms tactics. The use of combined arms represents our future warfare. Coordinated assaults of infantry, artillery, and armor to destroy the enemy quick, decisive attacks will win us our next war. Gone are the days of wasteful tactics. <clears throat> and mass infantry attacks without proper support, this new doctrine will pave the way to key. To victory, we with overwhelming firepower. We must. Uh, did I just read this one? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. All right, everybody. So this is infuriating, at least in my opinion, because how the hell are you supposed to see that there's something up here? Seriously, you see a little dot. Is that it? That needs to be pointed out way more, way, way freaking more than just up here. How am I supposed to know that there's supposed to be a button you can click up here? I recorded the end of this episode already, and then came back. I'm like, oh, there's a button here. Th 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 that is not enough for anyone to, to really know that there's something up here. Like, out of anything, like, uh, ep you, you wouldn't be able to see that. Then you can click on this. How are we supposed to know that we get to 100% immediately? Maybe I missed it. Maybe I'm just being stupid here. But, like, I was, I've been waiting for an hour off screen trying to see if there's anything here. This is an incredibly annoying. Just fine. Oh, just click on this up here. There's no arrows. There was nothing up there telling me that there's something here, which pisses me off in a, a huge amount, to be honest with you, because I spent so much time trying to figure out what was around here. So I'm kind of done reading focuses. So if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. As well as the LaHaye reforms, uh, intercontinental operations, and nuclear capabilities. But my good God, that's insanely like infuriating to see that, oh, there's a tiny button that you didn't get told about that's at the top of the screen. Because I was just sitting here for hours, just sitting like, what, is there anything to do? We've been trying to get rid of the resistance, but God, that's terrible. But dust to dust. Officially, there's nearly a security operation in New Bales. A newspaper would report it in the following days there was a tragic accident. A minor gas leak that had sparked a mighty conflagration and effectively brought down an entire apartment block. Surely, tragedy, yes, but the local police shut the case rather quickly. Governor Kerry Sick would later declare a couple of days of mourning for the unfortunate victims, but that would be it. Unofficially, however, the security operation in New Bales would go down in the annals of the history, uh, Nightmare Soup as the organization's greatest triumph. Nearly rivaling Operation Moonshine in scope and for good reasons. It had followed months of intelligence and counterintelligence work, pitting the True Moon Society against the Nightmare Hooves' best field operatives in a variable game of cat and mouse across the entirety of the Commonwealth. In the end, despite the jackal's thoroughness, he simply did not possess the sheer mole of resources that his opponents had. His headquarters was eventually tracked down to, through a simple mal mail mayor to an apartment complex, and that's where the Nightmare Hooves struck mercilessly. The jackal probably expected a midnight raid or a sniper from rooftop. What he failed to consider, however, was as the cargo truck loaded with the nitroglycerin. Can't be sure he's dead. This is infuriating me. Oh my god. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, there has to be an arrow pointing up here. Especially if you've never done this before. Like, this is my first time in this campaign. Like, that's extremely infuriating to see that. Oh, it's a tiny button. Tiny button. And I get it. It looks aesthetically very nice. Don't get me wrong. But, like, it has to have arrows at least show us that, that this is what we're working towards. Because that's uh, annoying. Like, after... Like, I've spent two hours doing this. I don't say I'm wasting my time, but like, Jesus Christ, my time is so valuable. Anyways, the death of tradition. The operation was a delicate one. Failure would have meant allowing the Anzawadi to fade away into the Zarantian Desert, spending countless months chasing down the small bands of warriors to little effect, effectively sending priceless intelligence work down the drain for good. 
Only the Lee could be trusted with that task, and as such, the Legionary Council sent out their deadliest dagger. The Emazib tribes probably realized that something was wrong when they heard the whistles of the aircrafts above as they released a deadly payload on the camp in the middle of the night. Such an inkling became a rightful certainty as SAS elements popped into existence all around them, seemingly crawling out uh, of the sand itself. The Zerontians were fierce warriors in their own rights, but under the captain Sterling Silver's guidance, they had superb training, experimental night vision, and a general lack of self-preservation instinct on their side. Having cut their teeth in a series of bold and risky operations in the Lost War, they were kind of colts and fillies that would be finding charging into a saturation bombardment as an honestly boring proposal. Tracers and armored vehicles' headlights illuminated the night for hours, surrounded by his most fanatical warriors and clansmen. Izem stood his ground and fought to the bitter end, directing the resistance from his command in the camp center, that is, until a young mayor from Bravo Company tossed a couple of white phosphorus grenades in there. His charred remains would only be identified much later. She had just embraced a new world, liberators no more. In dealing with this red snake, there would be not half measures, no such thing as unnecessary cruelty. Regular army, loyal auxiliaries, frontier forces, and other paramilitary. The nightmare is itself. Every available resource was marshaled with a single task of eradicating the red cancer before it could spread. It was a long task, long and dirty. Uh, a web of informant had to be implanted among the sympathetic populace to keep track of the NZLF. A characteristic approach was devised for dealing with laborers, with prizes for those meeting their quotas, encouraging them to keep an eye on their colleagues, and reporting them if necessary. Paramilitary groups and armored settled settler militias were constantly employed to break apart strikes and spread terror amongst unions. Veteran quick reaction forces took the flight to Liberation Front, raising training cramps. Supplied dumps and sympathetic villages to the ground. Such thorough level of state terror finally brought fruit last week as the SAS finally conducted simultaneous decapitation strikes against members of the NZLF leadership. Apparently, harsh measures had driven them to the edge of desperation, forcing them to take an ever active role and thus exposing themselves. Unfortunately, our teams have failed to seize Dia alive. Hopefully, their death will be enough to break their spirit for good. Socialism shall never take root in the Commonwealth. Are you effing kidding me? I hate this part so much. The end of the Bush War. Resistance activities are in a sharp decline across the Commonwealth, with the biggest resistance group dealt with. It seems the locals have finally come to accept our rules inevitable, and a few have even started to view us with some sympathy, at least when compared to the previous rulers. Conversations are constantly growing over the last months. Even now, there are talks among the high command about downsizing or detachments assigned to insurgency operation, and the loyalist militias deal with it mopping up. For all intent and purposes, the Bush War is over and the Commonwealth has endured for thousands more years. Our veterans, especially those that settled in North Africa, deserve a connection to their brothers and sisters in arms. By encouraging the organization of Legionary Brotherhood, our brotherhoods across the commonwealth, we can help foster can continue unity in our communities. The slave states. Some will never be fully pacified or enlightened. We must accept this. Therefore, certain regions across the commonwealth will be designated for the purposes as a source of labors and centralized areas to be utilized for their cir unique circumstances. Respect the chain of command. It never hurts to remind even the loyal citizens of the place in the commonwealth. There's only one empress and the council is her word in this world until she returns again. The council's decisions cannot be questioned and must not be ignored for Nightmare Moon. Well, I think one thing that would help out of course, like I said, arrows up here. Because now it's gone. Like, it's just here for a little bit, and then it's gone. Like, I guess I'm just not noticing it things enough, because I'm blind, because I wear glasses. But, like, you, you wouldn't see this. At least I wouldn't see this, obviously. That's why I'm so angry at this. The fruits of our labor. Very well, children. I think for today is enough, so I'll be seeing you all next week. Enjoy your weekend. Nosy glance beamed. Your students already packing their belongings and rushing excitedly for the class exit. Glance was about to do the same when she was stopped just outside by a falling rain. Her assistant. There's a frown on her face. Miss Glance, I've got to admit, I'm not sure we we're handling this the right way. I mean, we've yet to delve into the most serious matters regarding the faith of the nightmare, she exclaimed. Nosy Glance nodded with a patient smile. Uh, we could, but then most of these children will be growing bored, she pointed out. We're not in Urasagrad anymore. None of these kids have grown up surrounding, surrounded by our faith like we did. We need to approach it carefully, sparking their interest, you see. And the best way to do is to start with the first coming of the nightmare and the first of a war. That's the kind of story children respond better as it's not unlike the many legends they've heard from their parents, the same kind of love to narrate back at them. Well, yes, but, Rain hesitated, it's so quite unorthodox, as she pointed out. It is, I'm sure, but times are changing. We must adapt as well. It won't be a quick process, mind you, but we'll have results. Not if with this generation, then with the next. She flashed her a smile. Now, all enough for today. I was planning on going for lunch. Care to join me, Miss Rain? The children shall teach your parents in the blood meridian. The Blood Meridian of the Evening Darkness in the Zebra is a new hit novel by the famed author Colin Mac McCulty. McCulty is well known for his early career as a ranger in the frontier of Cheer Up Terror, where he found inspiration for many of his novels. The intense and violent plot of the Blood Meridian has gripped audiences all across our nation. While local Legion officials have a lot of the book for its portrayal of the savage nature of a goddess, godless neighbors, many academics have noted an almost important subversive nature to many of the book's primary philosophies. The character of Legionary Captain Holden. Uh, being a prime example of subtle denouncement of the nation's policies towards natives of Zebrica. The novel he's portrayed is not personally believing in Nightmare Moon, but uses the faith of others to justify and encourage abhorrent, abhorrent crimes like scalp hunting. McCulty has denied any such attention and has encouraged readers to pull their own truths from the book. Many agree that the subtle critique of policy, ex exploration of theod theodicy, and, and faith makes the novel the magnum opus of McCulty's career. 
Your heart's desire to be told it's a mystery. The heart mystery is that there is no mystery. Like I was saying earlier, like, even if you get, like, enough intel here anyways, this should be some sort of thing that actually tells you, or, like, if you get, like, 100%, it's an adventure just pop up saying you got them. Or you can assassinate them. Or put it in the decision tab. I don't know why it's up here. I mean, the GFX is fine and all, but, like, I'm so used to having everything in the decisions tab. It just makes more sense. Unless there's, like, a button here, like, somewhere where there's, like, a unique GFX as well, or whatever it is, you know, image. You can do that here as well, so, I, I don't... I don't know why it's not here. It looks, I don't get me wrong, that little button up there looked really nice, but you're not going to notice it, probably. Honestly, it was, it was said to be up there, and I'm just being an idiot. And maybe I am just being stupid, but, you know, I'm not perfect. And the devs have done a tremendous job, but just, there's some, some things that I'm just like, good God. Good God. The days are hard enough, as is. <laughs> but we'll finish this out, finally, and develop Lancer Mark III. Sure, why not? Oh, since we have so much PP, I would like to take all the resources here, but we don't really. Yeah, we could use aluminum. Um, we could use a rubber here too. I'll take that rubber. Take that rubber here too. Resource rights would be nice. Oh man, but at least the mod, the mod moves fast enough that I can't complain too much. Just enough though. Look at all that. Now we have 100% compliance. Like, like bro. We just got rid of all the resistance. I added the most overwhelming resistance, and we still did okay with it. Goals, man, goals. Uh, of course, you did win as well against the uh, the changing. So, it is what it is. The world, the Entente, the second grand principality of Hepsilon. Um the River Federation, sort of this East Griffonian Treaty Organization. These guys are killing the Carthinian Pact. I thought you were socialists. They are socialists. They're very harmonic, though. Order the Trinity. Duchy of Toulouse. Alright, well, whatever. Colt Egg. We could raid, but at this point, I'm, just, I'm, I'm done. The Idol State Stallion. Lord Commander Lucian Eclipse sat behind his desk in a modestly de decorated office. Uh, over startling reports arising from slave states to the east. It had been his grandfather's uh, desk once, a place where the elder states pony had diligently, perhaps too mechanically, laid out the course for the cure of terror of his time. It was a place where he would have expected Lucian to do the same. Instead, Lucian had been passive in his resistance, passive in the wake of monumental mistakes. Auburn's words of him initially he trusted her as his oldest friend and at one point something more, but that time has long since passed. A time for decisive action passed too, and there's no going back from the path Lady Commander Auburn Leaf had set for them. A choice had been made, he placed his faith in the council's decision, and now he regretted ever assuming a seat. He could not stand by his friend faithfully anymore. Her politics had driven a wedge between them. Each report of a purge or a proposal made to keep the East in line drove the divide between them deeper. Lucian consoled himself that he was in a position to mitigate the damage he caused. He could not stop it, though. History, when the iron hoof he helped create, would eventually shatter. It would see him as another cog in a machine. What, could, what he could do was speed along the integration of some communities, grant pardons to others, and drive families to training battalions to spare them the cruelties of the world. To send idols lot evil triumph. Auburn Leaf's reconstruction mandate has ended, and as such, we have once more unlocked decisions which will allow us to choose our war master. Political power, stability, recruitable population factor, supremacy, war support. Lord Commander Clips and Lady Command and Lady Commander Leaf. What is this, Lucent? Auburn asked dismissively over the rim of her glasses of the mayor sitting behind her desk. Another formal protest of the council's policies? Another report of an over eager legionnaire officer letting things just get out of hoof? It was also trivial to her now. Lucent blinked slightly, shaking his head as the last fond memories of his former lover and friend melted away. The Auburn Leaf he had danced with at the Reed Plantation, the Auburn Leaf who shared with him a hope for a brighter future, disappeared behind the desk. Sitting before him now was a cold, calculating mayor who amplified the words of his departed friend's traits. It is Lord Commander Eclipse. Pardon him? Auburn said, a slight stammer in her voice betraying a surprise. The silence hung between them for a moment, her eyes squinting as it dawned on her. The pain in her voice cleared as she nodded once. Lucian, I don't think this is what... It is Lord Commander Eclipse. We are peers, not friends, not acquaintances, and certainly not anything else. Your policies are barbaric, your compassion is empty, and our past friendship is certainly the smallest tragedy in this constant barrage of suppression across the Commonwealth. That letter in your hoof is my last courtesy to you. Lucian snapped in reply. It is a list of items to debate at the next council meeting. I'm sure you will have the other support, but I make my protest heard. Good day, Lady Commander. A friendship ends, a nation endures. While Lucian is unquestionably a loyal to Chiroptera, he is no longer willing to serve as a war master and as such will take on a purely advisory role in the Legionary Council. And I think that's finally it, because I'm frustrated with this campaign now. But, 
overall, it was still pretty good. If you want to do this one, please go ahead as well. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like, that, just noticing that this thing was up here, that, that ruined it for me a little bit. I mean, overall, the campaign was very good. Like, the devs have done a great job with this. But there's some, just a few things that I would like to see change. But maybe that's just me. So now, for the second time I'm saying this, even though this is my first time in the video saying this, if you enjoy the campaign, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know in the comments as well. Did you notice that there's a, there's a button up here? Because I never saw it. So, and uh, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.